everybody said another yeah. father we thank you today we bless your name for what you have started doing i will thank you for what you are going to do in every heart in every life as we look up to you through our savior our sanctifier our baptizer emmanuel jesus the sanctifier we're asking lord that your word will penetrate every heart and reach and reach every heart even this morning in jesus name thank you lord for the answer in jesus name we pray good good amen god bless you you can sit down today we come to the subject of jesus that's Emmanuel, Jesus, the sanctifier. Jesus only, Jesus ever. Jesus all in all was seen. His savior, his sanctifier, his healer, and his baptizer, and he's the coming king. Jesus, our sanctifier, cleansing us from self, and sin and with all the spirit's fullness filling all our hearts within sanctification deals with sin in bread sin in what sin the sin that we were born with in sin did my mother conceive me and in sin was i born there is that nature of sin and when we begin to live, when we begin to, you know, practice how to relate with people, how to interact with people, then the branches of sin will begin to shoot out. And those are the words of the flesh. When we get saved, those branches are cut off. When we give our lives, our hearts to the Lord, those branches of sin those works of the flesh those external items of sin one by one in the plural they are forgiven they are cleansed they are taken away at sanctification the root of sin the inbred sin the inward sin is dealt with and god needs to deal with both the branches and the root before we can see him on the final day. That's why it says that blessed are the pure in heart. It's the purity of heart that takes away that root of sin. That's why it says Jesus is our sanctifier cleansing us from self internally and sin inwardly that's what he does and that's what we're looking at today we're looking at emmanuel jesus the sanctifier we read from hebrews chapter 2 hebrews chapter 2 we're looking at verse 9 it says but we see jesus who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death crowned with glory and honor that he by the grace of god should taste death for every man he died for everyone why to save us from transgression, from sins, from the outward expression, the branches on the tree of sinfulness. That's why he died. Number two is to uproot, to get rid of that root of sin, of the inbred sin, of the nucleus of the origin and of the very beginning and the source 
of the flow of sin in our lives. He died to save. He died to sanctify. I were told in verse 10, in verse 10 it says, For it became him, for whom are all things, and by whom are all things, in bringing many sons to glory. It takes salvation and sanctification, forgiveness and freedom, the holiness of heart that he produces and generates in our heart that he will bring us to glory and to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. Then in verse 11, it says, For both he that sanctified, he saves, he sanctifies. He that sanctifies, and they who are sanctified, they believers saved and sanctified. They who are sanctified are all of one. Sanctification brings us to oneness with the sanctifier, with other sanctified believers. Sanctify them through thy truth that they all may be one. And when they were in one accord, in one place, the Holy Ghost came upon them. Sanctification brings us in unity with the sanctifier, oneness with the sanctifier, and oneness, unity, agreement, togetherness with all who are sanctified. And it says, which, for which cause is not ashamed to call them the brethren. Hebrews chapter 13. I'm looking at verse 12. Wherefore Jesus also, that he might sanctify his people with his own blood. When we are saved, because of the blood they are shed, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And when you see the blood that was shed for us, and we believe in that blood that was shed for us, we saved all those sins, transgressions, iniquities, they're forgiven and they're taken away. And then now, that same blood has the power. That same blood has the cleansing power to sanctify us. Because it says, Jesus also is done the first work of grace. And now he comes to do the second work of grace with his own blood. He suffered without the gate. Look at verse 13. In verse 13, let us go forth, therefore. We're saved. We need to desire. We need to run after. We need to seek the sanctification experience. We go forth, therefore, unto him without the camp outside the camp bearing his reproach look at verse 14 in verse 14 for here on earth we have no continuing city the reason why we seek to be saved is that we know that we're not going to live on earth forever and the reason why we seek the holiness experience, the sanctification, 
the cleansing of the self and the sin and the removal of the carnal nature in our heart is so that when we leave here we'll be able to see him in glory because without holiness no man shall see the lord for here we have no continuing city but we seek one to come emmanuel jesus the sanctifier we're looking at three things number one is the experience of sanctification number two is the evidence of sanctification number three is the experience from the expectation from the sanctifier the experience we go to the lord like we had an experience of salvation so we go to the lord to have the experience of sanctification like we have the evidence of salvation we also demonstrate and we express and we show forth the evidence of sanctification number three like we have the expectation from the savior that if he has saved us here is what he expects in the same way when he sanctifies us he has expectation the expectation from the sanctifier look at number one number one is the experience of sanctification the experience of sanctification but told in if you take us chapter 20 reading from verse 7 if you take us chapter 20 verse 7 sanctify yourselves therefore and be ye holy for i am the lord your god you'll see right there the connection between sanctification and holiness here is the command of the lord sanctify yourselves therefore and be ye holy for i am the lord your god look at verse 8 in verse 8 it says and ye shall keep my statutes and do them i am the lord which sanctify you you find that word sanctify in verse 7 sanctify yourself you find that word sanctify in verse 8 i am the lord which sanctify you the same word different meanings sanctify yourself set yourself apart i'm the lord that sanctify you i am the lord that makes you holy holy on the inside holy in the heart holy in your disposition the word sanctify as to meanings therefore and you find as you read the bible that a sanctuary a building is sanctified now the building has no sin has no moral defilement but the building is set apart is sanctified for god's use only and when it says sanctify yourself set yourself apart for god's use you so set yourself apart that satan will not have any inroad into your life to make use of you you so set yourself apart 
that self, pride, the Adamic nature will not have access unto you to make use of you. You so set yourself apart that the evil society, the world in which we live, will not have any use of you. Sanctify yourself, dedicate yourself, and consecrate yourself unto the Lord, that He and He alone will have the free, full, final use of your life. And then, it's when you do that, you show your desire, you show your expectation, and you show your passion for that sanctification of the Lord. And now he says, I am the Lord which sanctify you. It now makes you holy. It purifies you. It purges your heart. It purges your life. And you have the experience of sanctification. It tells us in Ephesians chapter 5, from verse 26, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 26, that he might sanctify. He, the sanctifier. He, Jesus. He, the one who had saved us already, who now sanctifies us as a second definite word of grace that he might sanctify and cleanse when he sanctifies he cleanses us on the inside that stain adamic stain that stain the bath marks were born with he removes he cleanses, he purges, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Then in verse 27, that result of sanctification is that he might present it that the church to himself a glorious church we're saved when the church if that's all what the church knows salvation 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 gracious church the grace of god in our life teaches us to deny outward external ungodliness but now he sanctifies us so that it will take us beyond being a gracious church to a glorious church. Not having spot or wrinkle. Wrinkle is the mark, the evidence of the old man. And when there's wrinkle on the face, it's not just the face, it affects the brain. It's not just the brain, it affects the flow of liquid in the body. And it's not just the wrinkle, the wrinkle is just the evidence that the old man, old age, has come. And all that, the wrinkling, brings also the internal weakness. The weakness, the old man cannot run or jump the huddle like he used to do many years ago. The wrinkle then is the mark of the old man in the life of the saint. This weakness there, sometimes thoughtlessness there, sometimes there's weak eyesight. 
The vision is blood, old man, wrinkle. And the passion is also deemed. The hearing, old man, hearing is affected. When he sanctifies, he takes away the wrinkle, the mark of the old age, the deem of vision and the decreasing of passion and it takes away the blockage of the flow of the word of god in our heart in our life not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing but that it should be holy sanctification brings holiness of heart and it says without blemish it tells us in hebrews chapter 13 reading there from verse 12 it says here is what christ has done jesus also that he might sanctify the people now he doesn't sanctify building we do that. We set the building apart. It doesn't sanctify instruments. We do that. We set that instrument apart. We say this instrument is dedicated to the worship of the Lord, sanctified. This instrument will only play music, tunes, that will honor God, exalt God. This instrument will not glorify itself and will not minister to the carnal emotions of the flesh. We do that, but God sanctifies the people. Not instrument, not building, it sanctifies the people who are saved wherefore jesus also that he might sanctify the people with his own blood suffered outside the gate in verse 13 it says let us go let us pray let us seek let us ask let us demand we have a part to play in having the experience of sanctification we drop every other thing because after all all those other things will not take us to heaven we have to be saved to get to heaven and if we're involved with this this and that and we're not saved yet and the greatest of wisdom in our lives to drop all those things and to get saved if we're not sanctified purified cleansed made holy at heart and the greatest of wisdom to drop every other thing that occupies our attention Drop them so that we go forth and we seek and we pray and we consecrate and we seek the Lord until we are sanctified. Let us go forth therefore unto him without the camp bearing his reproach. Verse 14, for here on earth here in our existence we have no continuing city but we seek one to come and it is because of that we pray we seek his face so we can have this experience of sanctification in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 22, abstain from
from all appearance of evil even before sanctification we're saved and because we're saved and we're telling the lord we need a deeper experience now how are we going to ask him for a deeper experience if the deep experience of salvation is not evident abstain from all appearance of evil before we seek the higher experience the better experience and the greater experience will manifest that we already have the good experience of salvation and as much as possible whatever we know to be evil whatever we know to be an appearance of evil abstain from all appearance of evil now if somebody does not abstain from evil he cannot go to the next verse and expect sanctification if somebody does not abstain from what he knows that other people will judge will estimate that that's an appearance of evil that man that woman that does not show that he has the heart the desire and the expression of life to abstain from evil from appearance of evil from all appearance of evil it should go back and consolidate his salvation consolidate the experience of salvation and then after that verse 23 it says and the very god of peace would have given us peace in our heart peace with the lord and peace in the lord we would have experienced the peace of god in our heart justified no restlessness in the heart no disturbance in the heart no conflict in the heart he has peace with god and he has the peace of god and the god of peace sanctify you holy w h o l l y that means completely sanctify you completely sanctify you totally sanctify you thoroughly sanctify you entirely when we come to the lord we're not asking for a superficial sanctification when you are sanctified you go and you don't get angry mm -hmm. <laughs> what if you are not sanctified and you are saved you get angry he that is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment of god anger is dealt with anger is one of the branches of the tree we're talking about and wickedness and cruelty is one of the branches of the tree of sin we spoke about earlier salvation takes that away if you are beating your wife if you are tormenting your husband if you are getting angry at non-essentials even at essential things there's concern about your salvation when we are saved we love we love our wives we love our husbands we love our children we love members of the church and we love our leaders we love our leaders to the point of obeying them as they teach us the word of god if that is not there and there is you know that anger oozing out go back to the cross reconsolidate the experience 
of salvation. Here's sanctification. The very God of peace sanctify you wholly, thoroughly, entirely, completely, totally, inwardly. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless after that sanctification god has not stopped working he continues to preserve you blameless every day every week and every moment of your life why because at any moment christ can come and we need to follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the lord and because he can come at any time as the days of noah were so shall the days of the coming of the son of man be we were eating and drinking marrying and giving in marriage and they were, you know, doing this and that until the flood came, took them on a wares. And because we know the coming of the Lord will be like that. After we are saved, after we are sanctified, we remain in that experience of sanctification. It says, preserved, blameless, unto, until the coming of of our lord jesus christ that's the kind of experience that enoch had in hebrews chapter 11 reading there from verse 5 hebrews 11 verse 5 by faith enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. The sanctified heart, the sanctified life pleases God. The life that is sanctified and every moment of his life morning afternoon and evening in every situation all his action all his attitude everything it does pleases god sanctified it doesn't take time off not to please the lord it doesn't say lord of course we don't say that directly but actions speak louder than the voice lord i need to take time off i need to please myself i'm hungry of self-praise i'm hungry of self-pride i'm hungry of self-recognition lord i take time off to please myself there's no sanctification there. I take time off to please society. My people have been wondering what's happening. They're not pleasing us anymore. What's happening? They're not going away anymore. They're putting pressure on me. So Lord, give me a chance. I need to please society a little. Sanctification doesn't accept that i want to please my flesh <laughs> like it's my flesh is you know crying out give me this give me this you're denying me of pleasure and so god i'm sorry i need to attend to this i'll come back i need to please the flesh sanctification makes us to please god in everything at all times and we tell self tell the society and tell the flesh there is no time to please you anymore because now 
were dedicated unto the Lord, want to please the Lord every time. It tells us in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, reading from verse 10. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 10. Ye are witnesses, and God also, how holily and justly and unblameably we behaved ourselves among you that believe. What do you see there? Ye are witnesses. You members of the Thessalonian church, ye are witnesses. They are witnesses of his salvation. How holily and justly and unblameably we behaved ourselves among you. How long did the preacher with the members, not up to half of the day, even if he preaches two hours, not half of the day, even if he prays and interacts and counsels three hours, not half of the day, he'll go to sleep, He'll go to, you know, have time apart by himself. And we don't know what he's doing at that time, but as we see him in the open, salvation is demonstrated. That's all we can judge is outward action, is outward behavior. Ye are witnesses, is the witness of salvation. The salvation we have that has cut off all those branches of unacceptable behavior, the anger and the bullying on people and the control that is lost. No, all that we can see that on the outside. But the sanctification, he said, you are witnesses of my outward life. But now you are witnesses and God also. God witnesses to the sanctified heart. That one you cannot see. But God is witness. How holily, holy from the inside just from a principle from the inside unblameable from the nature the new nature the lord had given him that sanctification that god also witnesses to he knows what men do not know he knows what our members do not know how do the members know the relationship between the pastor and his wife, they won't know. How will the members know the inward thoughts and the inward plan and the inward projection in the heart that is not spoken out? They won't know, but God knows. How does God know? The inward depravity that when we come out and want to be dignified, we suppress. And there are things, many things, people suppress. I cannot relate with that sister openly as I'm feeling inside. I suppress that in the open. But God knows what's inside, which we're trying to suppress. When we're saved, outward life, holy. Outward life, just. Outward life, unblameable. When we're sanctified, God that sees on the inside, He looks at the heart and He says, That heart is holy and just and unblameable with the believers and even outside the believers' circle. Daniel chapter 6. We're reading there from verse 3. In Daniel chapter 6, verse 3. Then this Daniel, 
not every Daniel in the world. This Daniel, this one that lived in Babylon, and he had the grace of God and Nebuchadnezzar, or the magicians, or the people around him could not see any blemish on the outside. This Daniel was preferred above the presidents and the princes because an excellent spirit was found in him. And the king thought to set him over the whole realm. He said, this man is a dependable man, a trustworthy man, a man you can leave all your property and close your eyes and nothing will happen to the property. He was saved. Look at verse 4. In verse 4 it says, Then the presidents and the princes sought to find occasion against this Daniel. Against Daniel saved and sanctified concerning the kingdom. But they could not, they could find none occasion, no fault. For as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error of fault found in him old testament how about the new testament believers how are we doing no fault no error no deliberate action that you know it was an error not daniel when we are saved we're so careful in our lives we're conscious of that salvation and we carry that salvation in everything that we do. And then we're told in verse 5, verse 5, Then said these men, we shall not find any, any, any occasion against this Daniel, except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. They knew that this man will not bulge. He will not compromise. He will not shift away from the law of his God. They studied him externally openly and they knew he will not play with his relationship of salvation with the lord look at verse 22 in verse 22 my god a saint is angel and has shot the lion's mouth as short the lion's mouth, plural. Lions, plural. Mouth, plural. That they have not hurt me for as much as before him in no sense was found in me. Before him, before God that sent the angel, he has looked at my heart. He has looked at my inward disposition. An innocency was found in me. And also before the salvation, before the O King, you see my life, external life, that I have done no hurt. We'll come to number two now. We've seen the experience of sanctification. Now, the evidence of sanctification. What's the evidence of sanctification? How do I know I am sanctified now? 
that's more important than me judging other people examining other people and finding out about other people is she sanctified is he sanctified mind your business first you may know those who are sanctified those who are not sanctified you may have discernment as to those who are sanctified and those who are not sanctified that discernment of others will not take you to heaven it's you yourself that you find out am i sanctified don't worry about your husband he breathes and you don't have to you know check up is he breathing he closes his eyes when he needs to sleep you don't have to get up is my husband closing his eyes mind your own experience find out about yourself we're checking up on brother so and so we're checking up on sister so and so leave all that alone you see all that running after other people pressurizing other people goading other people then that doesn't help you you lose the time of finding out whether you are sanctified or not you lose the time of checking out whether you are ready for the coming of the lord or not check up on yourself examine yourselves whether ye be in the faith the faith that brings salvation and the faith that establishes sanctification in our lives that's what to check up all this you know running after other people to put them in shape and to put them under control and to make sure that they are this or that you're wasting your life you're wasting your time concentrate on yourself i see eating is an adult as a man he knows when to eat I see taking water is an adult she is an adult the thing is have i eaten have i satisfied my hunger have i satisfied my thirst have i re-established my relationship with god that's the profitable thing we have to do the evidence of sanctification we're looking at deuteronomy and i'm reading from chapter 30 verse 6 deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 6 and the lord thy god will circumcise thine heart they were ready out of egypt saved when i see the blood i will pass over you they already passed through the red sea baptized in water and they already came over here and they were already eating and taking the manna that came from heaven we're already looking at the word of god and having quiet time but there's still something remaining the heart the lord thy god will circumcise thine heart and the heart of thy seed you understand the children of israel the reason why they missed the land of promise because their hearts were not sanctified were not circumcised were not cleansed because their heart unstable unsteady unreliable always had the mind of what we ate in egypt what we enjoyed in egypt they forgot the lashes they forgot the deprivation they forgot the suffering they had in Egypt. 
and they were always there because their hearts were not circumcised by the time you get to the new testament their ears were not circumcised the minds were not circumcised because they didn't give themselves to the Lord, surrender themselves to the Lord so that their hearts will be circumcised. That's another word for sanctification, the circumcision of heart. And the heart of thy seed, the Lord wanted that sanctification that circumcision of heart to go from generation to generation saved generation to generation sanctified circumcising heart from generation to generation and what will that produce to love the lord thy god with all thine heart and with all thy soul that thou mayest live. Sanctification then brings heart circumcision and it makes us to love the Lord with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, and with all our strength. That, that's what I need to check up. Do I love God with all my heart, all my soul, all my might, when I'm sad, when I'm glad, do I love God, all my heart, all my soul, all my might, all my strength, when I'm happy, when I'm unhappy, do I allow my wavering emotions and situations to affect my love for God when I have children, when I don't have children. When I've got a job, when I've not got a job. And when things are going my way, and when things are not going my way, do I love God with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, with all my strength. That is the test and the evidence of sanctification. We're looking at John chapter 13. And I'm reading from verse 34. John chapter 13, verse 34. A new commandment give I unto you. They had become new creatures in Christ. They were saved. Ye are clean through the word which has spoken unto you. They were saved. They are not of the world, even as I'm not of the world. They were saved. I've given them your word, and they have received your word, and the world has hated them. They were saved. Because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. They were saved now. After they became new creatures and they were saved, a new commandment I give unto you that ye love one another. No tribalism. That ye love one another. No selection. I love that one. He gives me money. He looks at what I need and he gives me, I love him. Uh -uh. One another. Whether they give you or they don't give you, whether they meet your needs or they don't meet your needs, a new commandment I give unto you that ye love one another as I have loved you. That's the evidence. Am I sanctified? I need to check up. What, how am I doing on the new commandment that Christ has given? Are you sanctified? 
don't just say i prayed i prayed and i got something and i felt something uh -uh. no feeling now what are you doing how are you doing on the law that jesus spoke about that she love one another as i have loved you that she also love one another look at verse 35 in verse 35 by this shall all men know here is love uh -huh. <laughs> love in my heart people may not see they may be looking at my frowning face let you come out of that and let all men see my wife is always asking do you love me do you love me you're looking at my face you're looking at you know whatever that's why you are asking that don't look at anything we have to look a face is the expression of what we have in the heart our action is the expression of what we have in the heart when we have sanctification the evidence of that sanctification we love god with all our hearts all our soul, all our mind, all our strength, and we love one another, we love the believers as Christ has loved us. And by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have loved one to another. We can walk, we can act, we can put this there, put this there. We can have different attitudes. While we're doing that, that the work appears acceptable and perfect. But the moving of the heart, the attitude of the heart, the disposition of the heart is not of love. And we're doing it correctly externally but inside the heart the love of god is not entrenched it's not established it's not entire in the heart let the love of god that we have at all times without any strings attached let it show that we have that sanctification look at second peter chapter one in second peter chapter one i'm looking at verse three here in verse three it says second peter chapter one verse three the evidence of sanctification according as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness now there's a difference between give receive how many of us have the experience somebody give you the gift of a book good book and you put it on the shelf one year five years you have not opened the pages he has given unto us on his own side he has provided the sanctification experience on the side of christ by his death on the cross by the provision of his blood he has provided all things for a sanctified life a sanctified heart but have we received have we prayed have we got that which is saint according as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue look at verse 4 in verse 4 whereby are given unto us exceeding great 
and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature. That's the evidence of sanctification, not just the acts outwardly, not just the behavior outwardly, not just the actions outwardly, a divine nature that he implants in us divine nature and the divine nature is not just for external behavior outward behavior our inner mind our inner soul our inner disposition what he has given a divine nature and it's that nature that controls us from the inside out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh the hands handle the feet move and the eyes see and notice is the heart and when he gives us that divine nature it will show forth in our thoughts in our minds in our disposition and the things we do in the direction we go and if we are not having the divine nature it will also show because we'll have the human nature we'll have Adam's nature will have the Adamic nature will have the nature of different kinds of men but when we're saved and now we're sanctified and become new creatures in Christ and the evidence of that sanctification is that we have the divine nature and the divine nature will help us to be, to act, to live the way sanctified people live. In Ezekiel chapter 36, reading from verse 25, Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 25, then well, I sprinkle clean water upon a uh, clean water upon you, and ye shall be clean, and from all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. Salvation. And it's the work of God that He Himself sprinkles upon us, not a pastor, not a bishop, not a priest. He sprinkles clean water upon us and we're clean all the filthiness outward expression of sin taking away all the idols outward expression of uh, faith in the Lord all the idols are cleansed of I will cleanse you and now verse 26 it says and a new heart this is sanctification this is the evidence of sanctification in your heart also will I give you and a new spirit will I put within you sanctification in your heart a new spirit will I God put within you now when somebody has kind of inconsistent action through the spirit the heart that abides in him are we going to say it is God that gave him that inconsistency that carnality are we going to say that that the spirit the Lord has put within him to be inconsistent? Of course, no. 
if our lives are inconsistent, if our disposition, our emotion, inconsistent, up, down, frowning and smiling, knocking and attracting, attractive and attacking, if we're up and down, here and there, and we cannot be predicted, that's not coming out of the spirit, out of the heart that God has given. We check up because this is the evidence of sanctification. Evidence of sanctification in your heart. Also, will I give you a new spirit? Will I put within you? And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. I can find out for myself. I will not know every detail about you. You will know the detail about yourself. Do I have a stony heart? That's all I can check up. I cannot check up about you. Do I have a stubborn will? I can ask myself. You can ask yourself. Do I have a rigid disposition? After preaching, after praying, after counseling, after everything the people do for me, am I still as rigid as I have always been? I can check up for myself. You can check up for yourself. The evidence of sanctification is that the stony heart, the rigid heart, the stubborn heart, the haughty heart is taken away. And he says, I will give you a heart of flesh. Heart of flesh. Is my heart soft flesh? Is it my labor? Can it be easily controlled? Can it be kind of directed in the right direction? Or is my flesh like bone? Is my flesh like a rock? That although I proclaim to be a Christian, people don't find it easy to live with him, to relate with him, is of one mind. That's the way he is, and he doesn't care about sanctification. The evidence of sanctification is that the stony heart, the rigid heart, the stubborn heart, the rebellious heart is taken away, and you have a heart of flesh. We're looking at Philippians chapter 2, and I'm reading from verse 5. Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Sanctification. That the evidence of sanctification the might of Christ in us, the thoughts of Christ in us, the tenderness of Christ in us, the obedience of Christ in us. But when we live our lives, we're not even asking any question. That thing I'm doing, that way I am going, is this the demonstration of the mind of Christ? This kind of atrocious, bossy, and incorrigible attitude that does not hear any word from anyone. Yes, it comes, as she comes to the meeting. But what has she heard? What has she heard? Where is the evidence of all he has heard all these many years upon his life? Yes, 
he attains retreats. Yes, he attains crusades. And he is uh, a vocal person for GCK. But where is the evidence of that GCK Emmanuel in his disposition? Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. That's what he wants in our lives. And now we're looking at John chapter 12. Reading from verse 24, John chapter 12, verse 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. Except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die. If self is so pronounced in our lives, you abide alone. Your work bears no fruit. Nobody gets saved through your life, through your action. Your wife will say, if, that, if this is what they teach them in that deeper life, Take your deeper life. I cannot go with you. Your husband will say, if this is all deeper life has done in the woman, let them take their deeper life. I cannot go with them. My wife is more terrible than before she, you know, entered deeper life. He used to have at least some outward respect, but now that she's gone to deeper life, deeper, deeper, deeper life, they taught her how to rebel against me, how to be stubborn, and to answer me back. I say one word, and she rattles out five words before I finish the one word. You see, when self is there, and the carnality is there, uncontrollable, incorrigible. You abide alone. People will say, don't get near him. Don't touch him. It's untouchable. Don't teach him. It's unteachable. Don't train him. It's untrainable. And you don't want to treat him. It's untreatable. You abide alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. The evidence of sanctification. Number one, the experience of sanctification. Number two, the evidence of sanctification. Number three, the expectation from the sanctifier. The expectation. He has shed his blood. He has given his life. He has painted the picture. He has sacrificed everything. What now does he expect? From those who are sanctified and from the people that profess that they really, really sanctified. It tells us in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 12. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 12. Then shall ye call upon me. And you shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. Then, after we have heard of such experience, after we have heard of the evidence, and we examine our hearts, and we look up, and we know without this, 
No one will see God without this, will not get to heaven. Then shall ye call upon me. That's what he expects. That now we will call upon him. And ye shall go and pray unto me. And I will hearken unto you. Verse 13. And ye shall seek me and find me. When ye shall search for me with all your heart. When we come before the Lord and we say, this is sanctification. Now I understand and I turn everything inward. And now I want, I desire, I pray for this experience of sanctification. And you seek the Lord with all your heart. Everything that hinders us. Talk, talk, talk. Chatting, chatting, chatting. Texting. And using the phone every time. Everything that has come in control with our lives. That even at the time of prayer, we're looking here and there. We're not concentrating. And we cannot pray with all our heart. And they're always calling us. Sir. They need your attention there. They won't allow you to pray. Ma Madam, they need your attention there. They won't allow you to pray. Something is happening here. You must be there. Think about it. All those activities, all those calls, all those disturbances that take you away from the time of praying, asking for their sanctification, We'll continue like that until the trumpet sounds and you remain shallow. You remain unsanctified. Your heart remains like it has ever been. Retreat upon retreat. And yet, the harvest is ended, but you are not sanctified. And only the holy, only the sanctified will be there. You want to seek him with all your heart with all your soul and you want to really really pray and when you pray what are you asking for when will you stop the prayer Ephesians chapter 5 reading from verse 25 Ephesians chapter 5 reading from verse 25 husbands love your wives isn't it interesting that the holy spirit will lead paul the apostle to say tell them christian husbands love your wives think about that think about the honeymoon period the love at that time think about when you first proposed the love at that time. Think about the communication relationship you had at that time, love. And think about how you opened up, if you opened up and shared everything at that time. How about the love now? Religious activities have taken that love away. And all the happenings at home, the things that, that, that have happened, and you have accumulated offense, 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 are taking that love away. When we come back to the altar and it sanctifies us, we love God with all our heart, all our soul, all our mind. We love the brethren as Christ loved the church. We love our husband, we love our wives, we love our children, we love our family as Christ has loved us. We love our neighbors as ourselves. We act with thoughtfulness. If I do that, 
no, that should love towards him. If I do that, does that show love towards her? If I act this way, does that show love towards his ministry? You think you love husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. If I cannot give money, can I give myself? If I cannot give time, can I give myself? It's taking too much of my time. It's taking too much of our time. We don't love him because it takes too much of our time. Time is life. Money is your life. That's your sweat. If you give yourself, you'll give money to the needy. You'll give time to the people that need the time. And you give time to yourself. When you sit down, when you take in the word, and when you spend quality time hearing the word, you're helping yourself. You're giving yourself to yourself for your benefit. But if you cannot give anything anymore, hurry, 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 hurry. And when you leave the meeting, you're going to be out there talking, talking, and talking. You're not helping yourself. Love the word. Love the preacher of the word. And give yourself like christ gave himself he gave himself for the church why look at verse 26 that he might sanctify and cleanse it of the washing of water by the word verse 27 that he might present it to himself a glorious church that's what he wants he wants his church to be glorious, not having sports or inkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. That's what we're seeking the Lord for. And that's what we're praying for until it is done. And after it's done, we don't forget sanctification at the bench of the of prayer at the altar of prayer we experience that sanctification and we take that sanctification away with us back home to the husband we don't talk about it we just demonstrate it back home to the wife we don't talk about it we just demonstrated back home back to the office back everywhere and we hold on to that experience and to that evidence of sanctification the expectation of the sanctifier job chapter 17 verse 9 job chapter 17 verse 9 the righteous also shall hold on his way. And he that hath clean hands, with clean hearts, shall be stronger and stronger. We live in that experience. We live with that evidence. We live with that expectation of the sanctifier. And we're stronger and stronger in that experience, in the visible demonstration, expression of that sanctification from today, that the first day of the rest of our lives until the end of our lives and faithful is he that calleth you who also will 
do it. He will do it in every life. I said he will do it in every life. But take time to call upon the Lord and to seek the Lord Jesus also. That he might sanctify the people with his own blood suffered without the gates. Let us go forth, therefore, bearing his reproach. Let's stand up now and let's seek the Lord and the Lord that he will do this great work of sanctification in our hearts. You can pray. You've heard the word already. You know about the experience. You know about the evidence. And you know about the expectation. Open your mouth and say, Lord, I want this. This must be done. We have had a